Ja, blöd. Good morning, everyone. Lovely to see you all. And our visitors, you're very welcome. Just relax and enjoy it in the presence of the Lord this morning. Why did we come this morning? To praise the Lord. And to meet with him and to hear his voice. And to give him praise and glory. Yeah, it's lovely to see so many here this morning. I think there's still a few outside having a cigarette. Not, not an unusual, but they are coming in on this. Not me, All right, I want to say, Alison has been so kind. She's done, because Alison is an intercessor, she's done lots of these little prayer cloths with a scripture on. And when we pray for people, it's biblical that you take a prayer cloth home and lay it on the person and they'll be healed. By faith, they're always healed when we put the prayer cloths. If we looked in, in the New Testament, it's something they did regularly. Yeah. yeah. So, thank you, Alison. If you've yes, got a desire, if you know somebody you, who is sick, Pardon? take them a prayer cloth. Yeah. And pray over them. I've, put, I've, had, them on the, I've had them on the Bible for over a week. Yeah. Because Alison has done me, I like this one. God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. James 4, 6. Yeah. So let's pray anyway before we do the announcements. Lord, we thank you that you are here already. <coughs> Lord, you're already here with us. So I pray, Lord, as we worship you this morning, that we will experience a greater depth of with you, Lord, in your presence, Lord, as we reach out to you, that you will meet our hearts and our needs as we hear. But Lord, we want to praise you this morning. We want to give you glory. Because you've been with us and you promised you'd never leave or forsake us, even to the end of the age. And yet you're with us always, Lord. So we thank you. Pray your blessing on today. In Jesus' name. Well, the announcements for the week. Hey, um, we'll see them today. Well done. They're not hot. Yeah. It's small, isn't it? It's small. But obviously, tonight now we have our service here at 5 pm. Who's the preacher tonight, Wayne? Really? Wayne, <laughs> Pastor Wayne is preaching tonight. That's good. Looking forward to that. Uh, Monday morning uh, prayer. I mean, for the winter months, we've gone to a later start. So we start at 9 till 10. We're having prayer here on a Monday morning. <coughs> yeah. And uh, Bible study from 10 o'clock. Don't know what's the topic, but we start in this. Um, probably. Go. Until I'm ready or able to put something together myself, we're going to look at videos. <coughs> and this one will be this week evidence, scientific evidence supporting the flood and Noah's Ark, showing that these things did happen. Well, that's good. That's what should be very interesting. That's so really good. interesting. I know. And Tuesday morning, BLC, 8 30 in the morning for all you students. Die hard students. Yeah. 8 30 in the morning, that's a really good I'm sure that's Bruce Willis. Okay. So that's great. The shop is open from 12 to 3. Prayer meeting then 7 pm, led by Wayne. Wednesday, chronic pain and self management course. Which started last week, which is a seven week course, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Then we have Celebrate Recovery, which Anthony leads for anyone who's had any form of addiction, um, so that we can help and support one another and celebrate our recovery. I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. So, and then we've got the Chosen, work, chosen video at 3 p.m. It's a really busy day, Wednesday. <laughs> oh, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Prayer and worship, 4 p.m. Uh, so, you know, that's just a let, quiet time and you just feel free and pray as you wish. Just worship the Lord. Thursday, Knowing God Bible Study, 11.15 a.m. And this week, my wife has taken that one. I believe that's right, Sally? Yeah. It's her turn. And shop, 12 to 3. And Friday, community shop, 12 to 3 p.m. Okay. There's one important announcement. Um, every week people are just leaving their cups around everywhere. If possible, can you put your cups in the dishwasher? And if you're having a cup of tea, don't leave your tea bags on the counter. There's a little box to put them in or put them straight in the bin. 
you know, because we haven't got anyone designated doing those jobs. And please, you know, it's it's important that we all work together as a team. You know, it doesn't really take much to wipe the surface after you've used it, does it? You know, mm. I know uh, Terry Libby seems to do it all the time, but you know, and all the counters, and I see other people that do it. But please, if you make a mess, just wipe it up. Simple, isn't it? You know. Okay, right over to Anthony. Um, yes. Let's so just one more practical, um, sorry nurse, but we have a new stair lift on the back, stair lift chair, um, so people are welcome to use that. There, there is a weight limit of 20 stone though, um, so I have just let people know, but there is a weight limit. It's a very practical, boring announcement, <laughs> but it needs to be said. To Hallelujah! Amen? Amen. Amen. Is God worthy of praise? Yes. Is God worthy of praise? Amen. Yes. Yes.
You are great and worthy to be praised. There is no one like you. You alone are God, the King of kings, <coughs> everlasting. Man. The Lion of Judah, the yes, perfect yes, Lamb. Yes, we praise you, O God. We thank you, Lord, for your provisions, for your blessings, for your promises, for your works. O oh God, may your kingdom come. And your will be done in and through our lives, our families, our churches, we pray. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Lord, we ask for your glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, I thank you, Lord God, to be here this morning, because I did miss last week. And I just want to thank you, Lord, that it has to be your wants, not our wants, Lord. Lord, forgive us when we're not patient. Forgive us, Lord, when we want you to hurry along and answer prayer. Forgive us, Lord, when we think we can do it better than you, Lord, when your answers to prayer are so wonderful. Lord, you are perfect. You are perfect in everything. Yes. It's us when we become silly people sometimes, when we call on you and then we try to do it ourselves, Lord. So, Father, I praise you that you're here this morning. I thank you that you're here this morning. Oh, Lord, my beloved Lord, I thank you also, Lord, that you're a God that heals. Amen. So, Lord God, I'll just say for myself, I couldn't hear this over there. I still can't hear in my ears. I've had this ear infection, which is God, but I can't hear people. And I don't know if I'm shouting, Lord, but now, Lord, I lift my hands, Lord. I want healing in both my ears, Lord, so I can hear. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, as we were worshipping, before Steve comes to preach this morning, I felt God asking us all a question. <coughs> how strong is your faith? Okay? So I felt God was saying, how strong is your faith? The Bible says, what you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and what you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And on what you declare, Amen. it shall happen. Amen. God's given us a mouth. He's also given us his word. We're going to hear that this morning. But God wants us to start thinking about what we speak. What comes out of this mouth? Is it blessings or is it cursings? Or is it declarations of God's word and God's love for us? What we declare in the spirit realm will happen in the physical realm. So God is asking us to start to consider what comes out of here. Amen. And when we do declare, see we can declare like Jesus did in the Sea of Galilee. He said, peace be still to the storm. And he also said, Jesus said, greater things than these shall who do? We do. You do. That's right. So what we say from our mouth is very important. We must always try as much as we can to say blessings, to say blessings over things, deliverance from things. And that's what I feel God's word was for us while we were worshipping this morning. We ask Steve to come and give us the word. You're so welcome, brother. I hope you may not be welcome after I preach God's word. When I preach God's word, that's what we've got to do. It's, it's awesome to be back. I don't know if I can uh, get this thing working. Do you need a microphone? Are you all right? Um, I should be all right as long as... Can everybody hear me? What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, no, we fine. have got one that can't. That's so. fine. Sorry. You what? You put the microphone in. Right. I think it's okay. It's no, it's all right. Anthony was just being right. funny. Just ignore yeah, him. Ish. I'm really kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, Alison's having different ways. Oh, no, it's going to hear it completely, but I couldn't hear you. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> I'm going to hold it. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 
Is that, is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Good. You've got a quiet voice, Steve. <laughs> I've ne never been told I've got a quiet voice before. Is that okay? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Um, I'm going to speak on uh, Noah today. Um, I'm... The reason I'm going to speak on Noah is because uh, I have this theory. Uh, I have a, a theory that we've got a kid's Bible and an adult's Bible. And 90% of people never preach out of the adult's Bible. And you're probably thinking now, what the hell is he talking about? Um, I'm talking about when we're kids. We are told stories like Noah and uh, Jonah and the Whale and, and various other stories. And we carry those uh, tempered stories through with us. So we, we carry the, the story of, uh, of Noah through with us. Noah going onto the, onto the ark with, uh, with just... Um, uh, uh, the animals coming in two by two and uh, uh, you've got this nice picture of an ark floating around on the, on, on, on the sea and then then it lands and everything. And I don't think that the true story of Noah was told. Mm -hmm. uh, because 90% of us, we think we know the story of Noah, but we don't actually. Um, there are masses and masses of cultures uh, all throughout the world uh, that have uh, a flood story mm -hmm. and um, now the flood could have covered the whole earth or it could have covered parts of the known earth um, the the area that uh, we we're talking about was uh, called Mesopotamia and it's a huge plain through which uh, the Tigris and the Euphrates flow. There are a couple of other rivers which it mentions in, in the Bible, but the Tigris and the Euphrates are still there today. And, and that's, that's what I'm referencing. Um, why did the flood happen? Because God regretted that he'd made human beings. Yeah which I think is possibly the, the saddest line in the Bible. Yeah. God regretted making human beings. Um, what happened to make God feel this way? Well, we reference Sodom and Gomorrah as being a terrible place to be. And we, we sort of think about it as, as the pinnacle of man's... Um, wickedness. It wasn't the pinnacle of man's wickedness. The times before Noah was the pinnacle of man's wickedness because that was the time that made God think, I regret making mankind. All sorts of weird and wonderful things went on there. In Genesis 6, it talks about the sons of God falling in love with human women. And they came down and had sex with him and women. Sex is a thing that we don't talk about in, the, in, in church, is it? Yeah. Well, I'm Giants. talking about it today. Um, <laughs> well, not in most churches. <laughs> our churches are different. Our, our churches are both different. Um, Safe as it is. Yeah. Um, and they created uh, the Nephilim. And uh, we see in the book of Enoch, which isn't in, in the Bible and now, it was in the Bible back then, um, that uh, angels who were sent to watch and take care of man, around 250 of them, uh, while they were watching mankind, they, they fell in love with, uh, with women and uh, 
they came down and had sex with them. It also talks about them having sex with all sorts of other creatures. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't know how much any of you have read of the Book of Enoch, yeah. but uh, the Book of Enoch um, is like a bit of the Bible that's been taken out to me. It, it's, it makes, a, a, makes the story of Noah and, and the stories around it make a lot more sense. Um, but the book of Enoch is qu quoted in the New Testament a number of times. Um, and it's actually quoted by Jesus a number of times. Uh, which, if Jesus quotes it, I'm for it. Yeah. Um, but the abomination of the angels having sex with women was uh, the beginning of occultism. Uh, and we can trace occultism back to, to this event. And the angels uh, taught the women uh, about uh, the sacred secrets of, of the angels. And the angels taught the women uh, basically what's, what's formed witchcraft. And that this is all in the, the, the book of Enoch. Uh, and the result of this perversion was, uh, was that violence filled the earth. And God saw every imagination of man's heart was evil continually. Now, we think that these times are bad. But you imagine every conceivable waking minute of man's being being evil and violent. Mm 